Did you know that the first blood pressure monitor was invented way back in 1881? And that the first electronic hearing aids were developed in 1898? Isn't it quite amazing how far we have come since then? And in just the last couple years, the amount of portable medical devices on the market has expanded exponentially. Now, personal portable connected medical devices like pharmaceutical delivery devices, insulin pumps, and connected hearing aids are commonplace. So commonplace that we even have an acronym for those devices now, IOMT. But designing portable connected medical devices isn't easy. You must contend with a variety of critical design concerns, including overvoltage, circuit protection, longevity, and more. But where could you go for more information about the development of portable connected medical devices? Right here, that's where. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Decentralized healthcare is moving from hospitals and doctor's offices to patients' homes and offices, and in the form of personal, wearable, connected devices. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Roger Bohannon from Little Fuse and I explore the components, functions, and standards for a variety of portable, connected medical devices. We investigate how Little Fuse can help you navigate the development of your next portable, connected medical design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Little Fuse. Hi, Roger. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. Thanks for uh, having me chat with you guys today. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about connected health and portable medical devices today. But Roger, before we dig into the details... The Internet of Things in the world of medical devices has grown by leaps and bounds in a relatively short amount of time, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's very interesting today. Formerly, it was equipment and testing devices in hospitals and doctor's offices. Today, you see it on person's wrists or arms or, you know, at their home. So, yes, it's expanded exponentially. So, Roger, what kind of market trends or market drivers are you seeing push growth in IOMT? Yeah, the market drivers today is the decentralization of healthcare. That's a significant driver for today. What that is doing, it's actually improving the healthcare services that are provided, not just in larger cities, but out in the rural communities where doctors aren't as generally located. There's more people that are getting the healthcare that's needed. And so that's what we're seeing a significant driver in the devices and personal devices, PPC, personal portable connected devices. That's where we're seeing the largest growth. Interesting. Now, Roger, when it comes to smart wearables, what kind of components are we talking about? The type of components we see going into smart wearables are switches, charging devices, anything that helps navigate these types of devices. Smart wearables, they've been out for a while. The exercise community has seen them on wrists of many of their weekend athletes or more professional athletes. But because of the type of capabilities that are being driven into these devices, they're now going through FDA approval. So smart wearables are falling under the medical segment for our organization today. You see a lot of these devices FDA approved. You see Apple, Garmin, Huawei, a number of different manufacturers going through that process. Roger, can we delve a little deeper into the functions included in these kind of designs? Very much so. The interesting thing about these types of devices and the functionality that's being driven into these devices, it depends on the imagination, innovation of the organization. You can put sensing, cameras, controllers, communication, connectivity. The increased functionality that are being driven into these devices today is almost to your imagination. The only thing that's limiting is how much functionality can you jam into a very small footprint. And that all depends on the complexity and the sophistication of the components going into it. Okay, so when it comes to the Little Fuse products for wearable devices, what kind of benefits are we talking about? Yeah, the benefits include the circuit protection. 
the capability of supporting or protecting from overcurrent older voltage situations or events. We have components that support that. All the devices we'll speak about today, Amelia, are low power, low current. They're personal portable connected devices that require the connectivity. So it needs to perform without consuming a lot of power. So the ESD production over current, over temperature, making sure it performs in a very extreme environment. So these devices work in a stream environment. When I say extreme environment, sometimes we're talking about just daily activities, walking from the store to the car, to the home, to the office. It could be raining, it could be sunny, it could be warm, it could be left out in your car. These are the personal devices that are now the medical devices of today. Okay, so what about hearing aids? What kind of components are included in a typical hearing aid design? These devices are now connected to applications that appear on your phone. So you're able to manage and control the functionality of these devices right from your phone. The types of components you see in there are the switches, diodes that protect over current ESD events. And of course, you have the on-off capabilities. And in the recharging unit, you have the ability to support recharging of these devices in a protected environment. Okay, so can we take a closer look at the functions here as well? The functioning in a hearing aid, you have the microphones, you have control volumes, have a processor. The types of products that Little Fuse provides there supports the circuit protection and the diode arrays, the IC for fusing, PPTC, and also the switching capability. Switching capability used in an earphone or a hearing aid allows for you to control its power, control the volume, and control other functionality. The interesting thing about the products that go into these devices is the type of protection, the IP protection that's associated with these devices, these components. A lot of these switches require the IP protection in its performance to make sure that evaporation, condensation, and other materials, debris, do not impact the functionality of these components. Okay, so what does Little Fuse bring to the table for these kind of designs? Well, the product series that we have, the Nano T, the XT, the KXT, the PTS, are all switches that uh, Little Fuse has for these devices. The Nano T happens to be the smallest switch made on the planet today. And that's a perfect product for a hearing aid, as we see today. These are very small devices that require a lot of functionality. So the overall size is very important besides the performance and the reliability. All those characteristics are critically important. For TVS diet arrays, the PT1020, SP1020 is an important product. Protection ICs and E-fuses or the PPTC, those devices from the little fuse portfolio of products all fall into a very acceptable solution for that, the overvoltage and overcurrent protection. Okay, so what about insulin pumps? I know that's a great example of IOMT. Can we take a closer look at that kind of design? Yeah, that design is one of the more fascinating medical devices that are incorporated a lot of intelligence nowadays. Insulin and diabetes is a indication a lot of patients have across the globe. There are over 700 million diabetic patients on the planet today. So the performance and the delivery of insulin is critically important. These devices collects a lot of information from a connected glucose monitor that may be implanted, that may stay on your body between 10 to 14 days. It collects that information. It can deliver the right dosage at the right times when it can track and measure your glucose levels within your body. So these devices learn. They are providing a great deal of information to docs and hospitals and for a doctor to read a dashboard and look at multiple patients and see how these devices are performing in these individual patients' lives. So what about the functions of an insulin pump? Can you walk me through that as well? Yeah, the functions of these devices, it, it's all programmable. The patient applies the device. They can navigate the different functionality that these products allow them. They set them up, and then ultimately it runs automatically. It performs to the needs of the patient. We use e-fuses, PPTC, diode arrays, and switches in the design and development of these devices. All these devices have to work in a very reliable, efficient, and consistent manner. These are devices that are worn every day in whatever environment you happen to be. It could be an 
exercise routine. It could go from day to day. But again, you're using these in an environment that we see all the time. It's the temperature ranges, the humidity, the moisture levels. It's critically important that these devices perform exceptionally. And the components that are going into these devices have to perform in a reliable manner. That makes sense. Now, what kind of products from the Little Fuse portfolio would you recommend for an insulin pump design? Well, again, it's all critically important that the environment is protected from ESD, overvoltage, overcurrent, and the switches from the uh, portfolio of the CNK brand that Little Fuse has recently acquired are all very high-performing products that fall into the basket that a design and developer of an insulin pump would uh, incorporate into their design. So what about the pharmaceutical delivery devices in this realm? Can we take a closer look at those? The drug delivery or pharmaceutical delivery devices that are on the market today, you see a lot of them across the many different pharmaceutical manufacturers. The medicines work in many different indications. It could be type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, psoriasis, Crohn's disease, migraines, fertility, pain management. All these devices are subcutaneous delivery systems of the medicines. These medicines are today, most of them, 99% of the delivery devices today are unconnected, just mechanical devices. We are seeing a development and the implementation of a connected device today. These connected devices have a different array of information that they're trying to gain through the interaction with the patient. It could be determining what dosage level of a type 1 diabetes is being used. It could be determining if the cap is on and off of a certain product that may be for weight management or it could be for type 2 diabetes. There are ways of managing and detecting how quickly the dose is delivered. It could detect the contact to a patient through capacitive touch. There are various types of functionality that they're driving into these connected drug delivery systems. These types of drug delivery systems require various types of components to allow this type of data collection in these small devices. So, Roger, can you explain the functions included in these designs as well? I would imagine it would start with an inject button. Well, yeah, essentially an inject button would be considered on most devices kind of like an on-off button, or it could be a dose dialing for an insulin delivery, or it could be determining if the product has reached room temperature and, and available for delivery. These devices hold medicines that have different viscosities. The room temperature of a medicine is probably recommended through their IFUs of the different medicines to be the right viscosity for delivery. So it collects various types of information. It has various types of requirements there. You need a control module. You need battery. You need connectivity. You need data collection repositories within these devices. So those are the types of components that are required. It could be a DTEC switch. It could be a TMR type device. It could be switches or any type of controller that Little Fuse has a portfolio of products for use in the design and development of these devices. All right, so let's talk more about what Little Fuse has to help with this kind of design. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about the drug delivery for dose styling. There is a two real competitive environments that are being used for this type of technology. And it's uh, two products that Little Fuse has a real good capability and understanding and development uh, environment for. And that's magnetic sensing of a dose. Also, the ability to detect electromechanically the dosing. So there are two different technologies that are used there today, and Little Fuse is a leader in both those technologies. Microcontrollers are available for these types of products too. It's a low voltage, low current, very sensitive environment. Little Fuse leads in those types of products. Now, what about blood pressure monitors? What kind of components are we looking at for these kind of designs? The components for these types of products are out there. There's a myriad of manufacturers that build these products today. Some of them are connected today. Some of them are not. Tomorrow and in the future, all these devices, these home healthcare type devices will be connected. All of these will populate the doctor's dashboard. How is my patient doing? Are they running outside the bands, the upper or lower bands of what the expectations are? That data will populate a doc's dashboard. 
and it'll give an indication. If everything's green on the docs dashboard that's serving 50, 100, 500, 2,000, 2,500 patients, if he sees less red blinking lights on his dashboard, the better. But the fact of the matter is all this information on a connected device will end up on Doc's dashboards. He'll be able to serve a lot more patients with a lot better services. These devices here, the components that are going in there is, are typically and normally, because these types of devices end up almost in everybody's home, are very highly reliable, high performance components, but very cost effective too. Little Fuse is a leader in high performance, cost effective components that allow device developers to design and develop products that are cost effective and competitive in this environment. Okay, so Roger, what kind of functions are included in blood pressure monitors? The types of functions required in this arena are really navigating the functionality of the device. So you're going to find components that navigate functionality. Are you looking for your blood pressure? Are you looking for your heart rate? Are you looking for other capabilities that these products will design into it? The types of components that we support for these different types of products, since they are battery powered, it's a low current, low voltage environment. The PPTC and the switch components that Little Fuse has allows for the better performance of these devices. So circling back to Little Fuse again, what would you suggest in terms of Little Fuse technologies for these kind of designs? What I would encourage design and developers to use or to look at for the Little Fuse portfolio of products is the switch content and the sensing capabilities of our product line. Of course, every device that's being built today should have some ESD protection, overvoltage, overcurrent type protection to ensure that these products are going to work in potentially harsh environments. So you want those to be the standard design techniques. Then switching, ensuring that the switches have the capability of working consistently and reliably over a long period of time is very important for these types of components because they are used each and every day. The buttons are pressed and interacted with and activated tens of thousands of times a year, and it could ultimately be a half a million times during the lifetime of these devices. So our products that are interfacing with human touch, pressure, sensitivity, are critically important to last over the long run. So standards play a very important role in this space. So Roger, what kind of standards should we keep in mind for these applications? Our support mechanism in this environment is probably unparalleled in the industry. The standards that we look at are the ISO standards, the IEC standards, the 11608, the 60601, the 60529. Those standards are critically important when we're designing, developing, and providing our components. But with a medical device, there are certain stages of the design and development of these products, specifically going into a CE mark, an FDA approval, or an NMPA type of certification. Those certifications go through the component, they go through assembly, and then they go through a completed device. You make sure that that component performs at every level during each stage. So there may be some engineering or development or variability associated with the design of the components that are going into those designs. So if we need to make a modification and switch the performance, maybe the haptic, it goes to human factor engineering, and they decide that they would like a little bit of a better haptic performance of the switch. Maybe they want a greater force or a louder click when the switch is activated. Those are the types of things that you will encounter during the design and develop of a medical product. So we're there along the way. We've got engineering expertise, design services, and we walk along that path with the design and development teams. So that's where we kind of separate ourselves from other companies out there, our engineering and expertise during that design cycle for a medical device. Okay, so if my audience would like to start designing an IOMT design, what kind of supporting assets do you guys have? On our website, we have a number of products that are available. Selection guides for sensing, circuit protection, battery packs, portable medical devices, the information and components that we're talking about in this presentation today are all online. So you can go to littlefuse.com and find these products. Our engineering and design surfaces are across the planet. We're very proud of the level of expertise that we have in our engineering design and innovation teams. 
So we're excited working with the leaders in the industry. So that's why we have the ability to work in any region, in any language, at any level of complexity. Fantastic. Well, Roger, can you recap your main points for me? What should my audience keep in mind from today's Jock Talk? The most important thing that I can leave today, I'm making sure that the message is delivered, is that we have the engineering capability and expertise to walk through with design teams during their design and development of a medical device. That's the most important thing that I can say about our products and the services that we provide to the medical segment. Fantastic. Well, Roger, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure, Amelia. Nice talking to you and uh, hope to talk to you again. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Little Fuse. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.